Well, with all the negative environmental stories in the media these days, you might not expect to find this. Satellites are detecting more green on planet Earth than ever before. Forests and croplands are all greener, according to a new report. But is that a good thing? KUSI's John Coleman is here with a special report on just that question. John? Interestingly enough, Sandra and Alan, not everyone is in agreement on this issue. Global warming alarmists say it's a sign that climate change threatens our very way of life, while other scientists and other observers say this is great news and shows a positive side effect from our use of fossil fuels to meet our energy needs. The new scientific findings come from the A-Train. That's a cluster of polar orbiting satellites. They scan the entire surface of the Earth every 24 hours. The first of these satellites dates back 20 years. This man, Professor Rangai Maninai of the Department of Earth and Environment at Boston University, has led a group of 21 international scientists in studying the extent of green growing things on Earth using the data from these satellites. British scientist and author Matt Ridley recently did a lecture telling about this work. Some really interesting new research on how quite literally the planet is getting greener. He goes on to explain how our use of fossil fuels to power our civilization is increasing the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as measured by the Keeling curve and then explains how this impacts the greening of Earth. Between 1982 and 2011, 20.5 percent of the vegetated area of the planet got greener and 3% got browner. Ridley explains that because the world is a little bit warmer, there's more evaporation from the oceans and more moisture in the air. As a result of this, there's a slightly heavier rainfall, so we tend to get a little more greening. Then he adds the other half comes from carbon dioxide itself. He says that since cars, trucks, power plants, and factories are putting out more carbon dioxide into the air, there is more fuel to grow plants. It works like this. When there's more carbon dioxide in the air, the plant doesn't have to open its pores so much, so it doesn't lose so much water while absorbing the carbon dioxide it needs to grow. And listen to his explanation of the result. So it's really quite a remarkable phenomenon here. Because of the burning of fossil fuels, we're making the planet greener. It's an astonishing discovery, I think. I think it's rather amazing. And, of course, it's an incredibly unwelcome discovery for the environmental movement. <laughs> they don't want to hear this at all. And how is it possible? I mean, after all, weren't we supposed to be devastating the planet? Other scientists totally focus on the part of the increased greening that's the result of warming, particularly along the U.S.-Canadian border. While farmers in that region are enjoying increased food productivity, warming alarmists say this is a sign of major problems ahead. It comes down to perspective. For instance, listen to how Ridley opened his recent TED lecture. When I was a student here in Oxford in the 1970s, the future of the world was bleak. The population explosion was unstoppable, global famine was inevitable, a cancer epidemic caused by chemicals in the environment was going to shorten our lives, the acid rain was falling on the forests, the desert was advancing by a mile or two a year, the oil was running out, and a nuclear winter would finish us off. None of those things happened. And astonishingly, if you look at what actually happened, in my lifetime, the average per capita income of the average person on the planet, in real terms, adjusted for inflation, has trebled. Lifespan is up by 30%. Ridley goes on to explain that life has gotten better and better, and he credits it all to our civilized way of high-tech, industrialized life. It's abundantly clear that there have always been those who spread alarm and other people who see a brighter side. I guess I'll leave it to you to take a side or stay in the middle. Sandra and Allen. All right, some great information there, John. Thank you.